In western Bengal, a hundred miles from the city of Calcutta, there are these Chatim trees. Under them is a marble slab raised in memory of a great saint, Maharshi Debendranath Tagore. He came here in 1863 for meditation and prayer, and the words inscribed upon the slab are those that filled his mind as he thought of God. He is the repose of my life, the joy of my heart, the peace of my spirit. Maharshi's youngest son was Rabindranath Tagore, honored by the world not only as India's greatest poet of this age, but also for his guiding influence on the cultural renaissance of his motherland. In 1901, from the poet's inspiration, there arose at Shanti Niketan a non-communal institution for girls and boys, where education was to be had in close communion with nature. Twenty years later, the institution had grown to such proportions that it came to be recognized as Vishwa Bharti, an international university. Shanti Niketan's daily life begins at dawn, and before classes, the inmates foregather for prayers. Classes which begin at seven are for the most part conducted out of doors. In order to develop a close relationship between teacher and pupil, classes are kept small and informal. Life here is simple, for it follows the ancient Indian tradition of education, adapted to modern conditions. Various languages are taught in China Bhavan, a Chinese class, a French class, students learning Tibetan, a Sanskrit class, a Bengali research class. No glimpse of Shanti Niketan is complete without a visit to Kala Bhavan or the School of Fine Arts. This important section is run by the distinguished artist Mr. Nandalal Bose, well known in India and abroad. He is the creator of these charming frescoes. The variety of the arts in Kalabhavan is remarkable. Here are the students engaged in batik work, the form of textile printing made famous by the people of Java. In the modeling class, one has positive proof of student ability. Girl pupils doing leather work. And others absorbed in drawing and painting. The Tibetan artist, Dorche Lama, painting a fresco. The Rangoli class at work on an Alpana design. A class doing woodcuts. Another embroidery. A weaving class. Sangeet Bhavan, the home of music and the dance. A class in Manipuri dancing. clock is bath time for the youngsters. Boys will be boys the world over. Lunch time is 11.30. The pupils take it in turns to serve the others. This teaches them a valuable lesson that there is no such thing as degrading work. Afternoon classes begin at 2 and continue until 
It's never too young to learn kindness to animals. If only this dog will remember he's hurt, we can hold our lesson in first aid. Dear, dear. He makes a most impatient patient. Instruction in manual training helps in the coordination of hand and eye. Hobbies are encouraged here, and a favorite with the young is poultry keeping. In the late evenings, there are entertainments organized by students. Today, it's a dance drama composed by the poet himself. Every Wednesday morning, students foregather in this shrine. God is worshipped here in all his glory, without need of image or altar. The advent of the seasons is celebrated with song. Tonight, they welcome spring. In this house called Udayana, which means dawn, Rabindranath Tagore spent the last days of his life. Poet and patriot of India, Tagore was known to his countrymen as Gurudev, or master. In 1913, he received the Nobel Prize for his immortal classic, Gitanjali. Although Gurudev is with us no more in person, his spirit endures in Shanti Niketan and his aims are still observed by his devoted disciples. May their work and ideals prosper.